Hello, I'm Anthony. Today I'm going to demonstrate a new feature in Hallean 7 called Decompose. This is a process whereby we uh, Hallean identifies the tonal and noise components of a sample and can split them out into separate WAV files. And as you'll be able to see, we can do different processing on the two sides of the fence. I've got myself a completely empty instance of Hallean here. And I'm going to open the media bay and I've selected a sample. This is in the VST library called 80 Music Suspense. Sounds like this. So we've got uh, a bluff underneath, which is going to be the tonal component, but there's also some kind of fizzy noise stuff. We're going to extract that out and see if we can separate those two things out. Drag it into Hallian, drop, and we're done with the media bay. Don't need that anymore. And I'll jump over to the sample page and we can start doing some processing. I'm going to zoom in so that I can see the entire sample. And you can see there's some silence at the beginning of this sample. So I'm just going to jump over that for the sake of today. We don't need to worry about perfection from our sampling. Okay, this is a better part of the sample to play with. So I want to capture that bluff and separate the noise out. I'm going to head over to the decompose tab at the bottom of the screen. We've got various options. Now bear in mind, when you first go into this tab, None of this is enabled. Until we press pre-listen, the decompose tab isn't going to do anything. Don't fall into the habit of making changes to these controls and thinking that you're gonna hear the outcome, you won't. We want to audition the difference between the tone and the noise before we actually do the extraction. Now the three controls at the left-hand side of the tab are the ones we need to understand. We've got sensitivity, cutoff, and duration. And even though that's their order left to right, I'm gonna deal with them in a slightly different uh, hierarchy because cutoff is the most important. Cutoff overrides the other two controls. It basically says anything above this level is gonna be treated as noise, end of chat. If it's below the cutoff level, then the algorithm, algorithm will try to determine via its other mechanisms, its other settings, whether or not uh, any individual partial, which is part of the complex wave in the background, whether it's noise or tone. So we need to start with the cutoff. The easiest way to demonstrate this, I'm gonna start off from a point of absurdity and make everything get shoved over into the noise camp. The way to do that is to set the cutoff at minimum, which basically means everything is now going to be considered noise. It's literally irrelevant what I do with the other, other two controls. I'm now going to engage decompose by pressing this pre-listen button. And when you can see this processing bar in the bottom corner, don't bother pressing a key until that's finished. So that's Hallian doing this division process, splitting out the two different components. What we now need to do is audition those two different components with our solo buttons. So if I solo noise and press a key, what you're hearing there is the entire tone. Because I set the cutoff at minimum, there's nothing else. Everything is on the noise side of the fence. If I solo the tone to prove that, complete silence. So that's just a, so that's just a sanity check to prove what I was talking about with the cutoff. It's not actually useful from any musical context. Let's start dialing in some values in these controls now and hear the algorithm do different work on this sample. Now, sensitivity is a pretty unintuitive control to think about because you basically have to invert your, your brain to process it. The easiest way to think about it is the further uh, towards zero dB, as you can see, as I'm turning this control up, it's heading towards zero dB. The further you turn it up, the more the, the, the tone is gonna, the sound is going to be considered to be, a, to be tonal. So I've just set it to very nearly maximum here. You can see Hallian's having to work really hard because it's basically determining all of the frequency ranges. It's not really able to ignore every, anything. Almost this entire sample, um, is within the minus infinity to what's the minus 7.7 .7 db so we're basically processing the vast majority of the sample if i press a note now you can see that the vast majority of it is tone and over on the noise side we've got very very thin very nasal stuff there's hardly anything left as i pull this sensitivity down there'll be almost no tone left now and the vast majority of the sound will be on the noise side and I need to be careful with my volumes. I just discovered, let's have a listen to the tone side. Practically nothing there because 
that's very, very quiet. Minus 71 dB is almost inaudible. So this is basically the, the like the capture range of the of the audible frequencies that we're working with. For this example, I'm going to set sensitivity to maximum. I'm going to make it work as hard as it possibly can. I'm going to leave the cutoff at 2.8. And I'm also going to set the duration at maximum. What duration says is how long does an individual sine wave, that's what a partial is, it's an individual sine wave inside a bigger, more complex wave that contains many of these sine waves. A partial is simply part of a bigger overall audio sample. So how long does that individual sine wave at any particular frequency have to live, have to survive, in order for us to be able to consider it to be tone? We're going to get this combination of sounds. Here's the noise. Very raspy, kind of alien effect. And our tone is a soft bluff. So we've taken away a lot of that kind of, uh, like I say, raspy noise uh, element of the sound. And we're left with a smoother, softer bluff tone. So let's start having a bit of a play with these three controls and see what kinds of sounds we can get. We want some interesting stuff. So I'll set the control there to about two o'clock, which results in a minus 27 dB range. So this is now genuinely in the in the area where we would start to be considering both noise and tone, totally reasonable, um, perfectly reasonable audio levels here. So we're saying everything quieter than that, we're going to consider to be noise. You know, we've always got a noise floor here. It could be minus 60, minus 70, whatever it is, the noise floor is going to be just that, pure noise. You've always got a noise floor on every sample you'll ever have. And so we're basically saying, well, what are we going to set that level to? Here we've set something still pretty severe. Minus 27 is quite high, but we'll leave it there. I'll leave my cutoff where it was and I'll bring the duration down to 50 milliseconds. So now the sine wave has to survive for less long. It only has to survive for 50 milliseconds in order for it to be considered to be tone. You know, that's long enough and consistent enough in order for the algorithm to say, yeah, okay, that's, you've done, you've done well enough. You've, you've done good work. You've survived for 50 milliseconds. We're going to call you tone. So noise, that's our noise element and our tone, nice and soft bluff. We'll change the balance of that tonal requirement now. I'm going to pull the sensitivity down. So now anything below minus 46, which is a more severe test. That's quite a low, it's an, an increasingly low noise floor. I'll change my cutoff as well. So now I'm going to say anything above 800 Hertz, we're going to be considering to be noise. So we know that this is going to be a deep sound. Only really our lower and low mid tones are going to be left. For duration though, we're going to give the sine wave a bit of a break. We've been pretty severe with those requirements. So I'll pull my duration requirements down and call it, let's say 30 milliseconds. Now our noise component sounds like this. It's got louder because of these changes in requirements. So much of the sound, everything above 800 Hertz is now noise. But the tone is now a pretty lovely kind of sub sound, really soft, really deep. Obviously we've got this big deep hit, this, this crevasse here, where when it's falling into that, we're getting that breakup. Well, that's a really nice sound. Having listened to that same sample at various different um, control settings, what I want to do now is jump back over to my media bay and grab a new sample. I'm going to drop this Cinema Percussion 1, which is a big hit with some tonal stuff in the background. Here it is. can hear that. Let's bring that in, see what we can do with this. And I've just normalized the sample to bring it back into sensible ranges because that was absolutely vast. And now we can start playing uh, with this tone. So again, here's our original sound. And now we'll try applying the same set of general control principles to this um, sample and see how that division works with the same settings. So the first realistic one was maximum, maximum 2.8 kilohertz. And I need to engage pre-listen, 2.7, but it's close enough. So our noise sounds like this, fizzy. 
and our solo and our tone. Deep kind of underwater thing. So what I'm trying to illustrate here is that different samples are going to have different division characteristics. We're only, we're only applying basic principles here. It still has to do the processing. It still has to separate and identify all of those individual partials in the background. One of the other combinations of parameters I set was 2 o'clock, 2 o'clock, 12 o'clock. Obviously, I'm calling these clock faces, but they all have their own independent values. So more of the sound has been shifted over into noise, which obviously means less is going to be left for the tone. In fact, you get that really interesting kind of digital bleep. And then a wonderful sub sound, which I'm having to be really careful with my levels, because even though it's quite quiet in the ears, OBS is very unhappy about that signal. It's a really huge signal. So all of the sound has been sent over to the, all of the low sound has been sent over to the tone side. It stands to reason, therefore, that if I pull these back any further, my sensitivity is going to basically throw me out of the game and there's going to be nothing left now. Again, I'm getting a pretty healthy signal in OBS that's like close to redlining and yet we can't hear anything because all of the sound, I've got my key pressed down, all of it is basically just at inaudible levels, but there's a lot of energy down there. What I'm going to do now is get me back to that cool bleeping sound because I like that. So that's two o'clock, two o'clock, twelve o'clock. Don't know why pre-listen just disengaged then. There we go. Now I'm going to show you how to output these two different tones. So we've got this massive sub with those digital blips. And our highly processed distorted noise sound. What I want to do now is show you the various methods for outputting these waves so that we can not only use them in our project, but have them as brand new samples for, for future use. Before we do anything, press this little cog, you decompose settings cog, and decide where you want samples to be saved. Now, I pretty much always store samples that I'm working on in the project folder. If I explicitly decide to put them in my sample library later, I will, I'll do that explicitly. If that's not your personal choice, you can disengage these project buttons. The top one is for any of your user samples, any of your um, physical WAV files on disk. The bottom button is for your VST folder samples. So anything that comes packaged in a VST sound file, which is a, a right protected thing, you basically need to choose where those samples will be stored instead, because obviously you can't store them to the VST sound file. I'm gonna leave my project options engaged. So they'll now be saved in a folder called Hallian inside my project. The first option I'll show you is to engage these two buttons on the, on the right hand side. Create layer is going to do that. It's going to create a brand new layer inside my program, but I'm also going to keep the original zone. I'm going to disengage solo and turn mix on. What that means is those two, um, those two waves are going to be combined together to play one overall composite sound. And this is what that composite sound will sound like. And now I want much less noise and much more bluff. Okay, so that's my kind of personal choice. That's what I want my sample to sound like. That's all the processing done. We've done all of that in pre-listen mode. Now we click apply. Watch what happens in the program tree. Here's the existing zone, but just above it, here's the new zone with our new percussion mix. Now have a look here. The, the sample is peaking. You can see it's clipping. If I normalize it, I can bring it back down. But you might want to do that processing basically before you actually do the render. I'll delete this zone so that I can show you what I'm talking about. Get back to the original one. What I'm going to do is just pull the levels of the tonal component and the noise back down a little bit. Engage pre-listen so that I can hear what I'm doing. Then click apply with all the same settings and the sample will just be slightly less peaky head into it and there it is perfectly well formed sample the various options available to us here are fairly self-explanatory if i choose not to create a layer guess what it's going to do 
not create a layer. Pretty straightforward. And if I disengage keep zone, then the original zone will be lost and only the new sample will survive, which I'm not going to do because I want to carry on playing with it for a little bit, but trust me, this will just disappear. The last thing that I want to show you is that if I leave either of these solo buttons engaged, you can see mix disappeared. So if I turn mix off and have either of these sample buttons on or neither, when I click apply, I'm going to get the individual separated WAV files. I'm not going to get the mixed version. Let's try that. And here you can see, oh, I actually turned off keep zone. It's okay. We're, we're at the end of the, uh, the demonstration anyway, but I've just thrown the original zone away. Now I only have the two waves. Here's our noise and the tonal component. which I've just realized is still very loud. There we go. What a fabulous sound that is. So that's Halion Decompose. Hope you enjoyed the uh, video. Please hit like if you did. I'll see you again. Thanks very much.